Hello crafters, I'm Jen B and I'm an independent snapping up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this card. It's um, called Collar Fold, not surprisingly, um, and it has been extremely popular at, um, recently. I've seen quite a lot of cards made this design, but all the ones that I've seen so far have been this way round and they've all been feminine. Um, so I thought I'd turn it on its head so turn it around this way and make it masculine. I think it's absolute beautiful um, fold and it is so easy to make. Um, so I'll start off by telling you the card pieces I'm going to need. The card base is Lost Lagoon and this measures eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches, scored at four and one eighth and folded or in centimetres that's 21 by 14.5 and scored at 10.5 and folded. And then there's a piece of Whisper White which measures 4 inches by 5 and 5 eighths and that's 10.25 by 14.25 centimetres. A piece of DSP which measures 3 and 7 eighths by 5 and a half inches which is 10 by 14 centimetres. You'll need a piece of uh, Lost Lagoon for the uh, layer here and a piece of Whisper White for the image and you'll also need a piece of the DSP which measures a quarter of an inch by 14 centimetres and that, no sorry, half an inch by five and a half inches which is 1.5 centimetres by 14 centimetres. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to cut our um, DSP, our designer series paper. I've already done mine because this is, a, this is the second take on this video and as I was doing that I had a thought, is there an easier way of doing this? Tried it, no it isn't. So I'll go back to plan A. So what you need to do is on your trimmer line the horizontal side up at two and three quarters inches or seven centimeters okay so that's all lined up nicely like that and then on this piece here which is only in centimeters you need to line the arrow on the cutting blade up at three and a half centimeters okay so wherever the arrow is pointing that's where it's going to start cutting and then slice it upwards so you'll finish up with a cut like this I got this far last time and what I thought was I wondered if I could score the folds on here but it was almost impossible because you can't really see properly in there and I thought that I'd much rather stick to my more manual way of doing it and using my um, fingers and my fingernails. So what you need to do is put your fingernail at the bottom of that cut right there and then lift one side up and just give it a little crease right by the fingernail okay not all the way along here just literally by the fingernail and then come up this side and do the same again there just a tiny tiny little fold so you've got to fold either side and then if you put your fingernails in and then fold it over what you need to watch for is that that point is at the point of your cardstock and also that this fold is at the bottom of your cut line. Now this one on mine is going to go a little bit over by the looks of things. No, actually that was spot on. A little bit isn't going to make too much difference. It's more important that both of these folds match up here because that bit may be noticeable. So move on to the other side, fingernail in place again and give it a little crease and then fingernail over to this side and again a little crease and then holding it in place fold this one over and once you've got it like that make sure that that's coming level with that one and then make sure that that is going to go into the corner which it 
is almost, I think, that's a fraction out but I'm really not going to worry okay now one thing that I'm going to do different with this card is I want to have little stitch marks coming around the collar and also on this piece here so I'll do that now so I'll open it up again I'm going to use my ruler you can do this freehand after all it is a handmade card so what I'm going to do first is put my ruler along that edge and just do my stitches. You can get nice fine tip pens like this. Um, we, we call them journaling pens. They come in a pack of two. One of them is a 0.5, which is what this pen is. And you also get a 0.1. I really must get a set because I really like the idea of getting the uh, um, point 0.1. That must just be so fine. I've had to move this slightly because I was not going very straight. <laughs> no surprises there. Right, okay, and then I'm going to come with my ruler across here. I'm just going up to the folds. and then turn it around that way and then more stitches you could write use the um, pen end of a crumb cake marker pen if you wanted right, let's put this piece down there we go I'm getting a bit further away here. At least changing my mind at that kind of place isn't too bad because that's going to be covered up anyway with my um, image. Right, let's do the other side of this. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to stamp the sentiment, this one, and what I'm going to do is I'm taking my DSP, I'm going to line it up on my Whisper White piece where it's going to be going, and then I'm going to use a pencil and very lightly draw lines along there very very lightly yes you can just about see those and my sentiment and the gloss lagoon ink the sentiment is from a stamp set called you're so lovely and I'm using this one here There we go, that's good. And just give that a few seconds to dry. While I'm waiting, I'm going to adhere this 
onto here. <coughs> I haven't actually cut mine to the right length, but that's okay. I can cut that as soon as I have it onto the other piece. Get my ruler handy. Oh no, I'm going to use this to line it up, aren't I? Right, let's put that there. At least this way I can get this on here straight. Sorry, you're redundant. Right, so I want this about, hmm, I don't know, about three quarters of an inch up, is it? I'll measure it once I've done it. Right, I'm going down to that line there. At least by using the grid paper, I know the uh, distance is okay. It's a lot easier, a lot quicker than trying to do it with a ruler. Okay, let me just tell you how high this is up, how much space I've got there. Oh, it's about one and a half centimetres spare which is about three quarters of an inch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my pencil mark. And then I'm going to adhere this onto the white layer. I don't recommend that you use a bone, bone folder on the crease when you're using DSP because it does tend to crack. I don't really think it needs it particularly in this design. Okay, so let's get this lined up. There we go. Now I'm going, oh well, let's put it on here first and I'll do the image. got some glue come out there so what I'll do is once it's dried I'll remove it with my adhesive eraser right okay so that's that so now I'm going to use the car image which is from in fact I haven't brought it over have I yes I have no I haven't that's not that one um oh here it is yes yes it's from Guy's Gre Guy Greetings, which is, this is a lovely set for men as well. I think Stamping Up do really well with um, their offerings. Now I'm going to do this in crumb cake. Um, I don't know whether it's just me, but the colour on the um, Going Global Designer Series paper stack says it's tip top taupe. But to me it looks more like crumb cake. I mean I know we all see colours differently. Um, right, I'm going to do this as an oval, so I'm going to leave myself enough room so that I don't go off the edges when I'm putting my die on this. There 
we go, lovely. I've got a little line across there. That shouldn't be there, should it? Let's try that again. better. Not perfect but it's still there. Well, how strange is that? In fact it is on there very slightly as well. So maybe it's meant to be there. Okay. It just seems to be more obvious. That one is very obvious isn't it? We say it's meant to be like that. Once I've finished, I'm going to go and check um, some other cards that I've made previously to see if that's happened before. That will tell me whether it's normal or not. Right, OK, bringing up my big shop now so that we can cut out these pieces. And I'm using the oval Oval's Collection Framelit dies, which is this set here, these ones, and I'm using numbers two and three. So first of all, I'll use the less obvious line. move it down then I can get the Lost Lagoon up here as well at the same time. In fact we turn that sideways that makes it nice and easy. Right okay. From a sideways angle it looks straight. Will that go on sideways? Yes that'll go on. All right, let's go. There we go, so there's that one. there, save that and I'll move the big shot out of the way. Okay. Now on this one I used a retired product which is the um, paper piercing, um, what do we, paper piercing templates I think we call them. Um, as I say they are retired. They There are still two sets in the catalogue and I do recommend that you get them because um, for such a small bit of effort that adds so much to a card. Okay I'm not going to put it onto this one because I've got the extra detail on the collar and across here and I don't want to overdo the extra bits. I'm going to put this onto the base with Tombow. Tweezers disappeared. go. 
I can see some more blue coming out there. So I will adhere this onto here using uh, dimensionals. I think four will probably be enough for this. There we go. going to put this underneath the collar but I'm trying to make sure that I get it central between that and that so there's about the same amount of DSP going through and make sure it's straight okay now I'm not going to stick that right the way down but I am going to put just a couple of little glue dots underneath towards the top here um, I like how this looks as if it's loose without it actually being loose. Okay, so one just under there, and then another one on the. Oops! You see that jump? Alright, that's up near the top. Okay, you can see that with the. Um, paper piercer. Okay so you've still got a nice bit of dimension there but it's not going to come up anything silly. So there you go. Nice easy card. Um, one with the stitching, one without the stitching. Matter of choice isn't it? Um, I need to look at that. I think I prefer the stitching actually looking at it. Yes I think I do. I will just show you one other that I did. Um, this one caused me a lot of grief. I seem to do one thing after another that wasn't quite right. Um, but again, it's another design from the Going Global Designer Series Paper Stack. That stamp is from The Traveller. I used the same Happy Birthday. Um, nice idea to do a sentiment like that. Um, only I know that <laughs> that's covering up a mistake that I made. Um, and I thought if I really make it obvious that it's going over the top, um, it looks like I've planned it. And on this one I put buttons on the collar so it's like a tab down. Okay, three ideas for you there. Hope you like it, hope you give it a try. Many thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions please contact me, I am always happy to help. If you've sub enjoyed my video please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Um, all the, part, all the um, products and the measurements will be on the screen but I do know that depending on what you're watching the video on they don't always appear um, so they are always in the details below the video as well. Um, if you'd like to buy any of the products featured here today please click on the 24-7 link that's showing in the details below and that will take you straight to my Stamping Up online shop. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio.